Why don't we do this? Mm, okay. So in this video, I'm going to be making a gray sweater. And I just wanted to tell you how I got there. So the other day I was feeling sad and didn't know what to do. So I just forced myself to go out and I went to Michael's to buy some yarn. And the yarn I had in mind was, I wanted to do this video essay and it has to do with color theory and crocheting. And so um, looking at colors all day, especially like primary, vibrant, bright colors, um, I wanted to make like a primary color sweater. So the intention was going to Michael's to get the yarn for the primary color sweater. And then I got there and <laughs> I had never bought yarn from Michael's before. So I walked in and was going down the aisles and then saw yarn. So I went down to it and it was all disorganized. And I've seen yarn at other stores and in videos and stuff at like Michael's and was like, wow, I guess my Michaels just doesn't have a lot of yarn selection. And I was like legitimately thinking that about Michaels. I was just like, well, if this is it, I guess I'll look through it. And everything in there was on clearance, which was kind of like a, oh, well, this is maybe just the clearance section. But I like was like 80% sure that this was all they had there. And so I spent like a good chunk of time going through all of this yarn thinking it was my only options there and I was in like such a bleh mood that I was like I'm not gonna go to Joanne or wherever else I'm just gonna get whatever's in here and of course they didn't have any like solid primary colors that I wanted so I was just kind of looking in there and seeing some super cheap stuff that was like really cool and was like well I guess I'll just get this because it's so cheap so um, I picked them up and was looking at this like gray flecked uh, yarn that was really soft and was like, well, I want to make a sweater. So maybe I'll just get two of each of these colors. And um, I was looking at how many yards were on them. And I was like, this is about how much I used for my other sweater I made. So I will do that. I picked up those yarns and then was like, well, let me just check the rest of the store just in case. And then I start to walk down the aisle and um, I see like the baby yarn, like the super soft yarn and was like, oh, they have this and was still thinking that that was all they had. I was pretty certain and was like, well, that's cool. But there was no prices even. So I was like, that's all kind of expensive probably. So whatever. And then I went to the opposite corner and then I found all the yarn <laughs> and they had like two or three aisles of it. And I was like, oh, okay. So they do have a bunch of yarn here. And I found the colors I was looking for, but at this point I had spent, I don't know, probably 45 minutes digging through the disorganized clearance yarn and had an armful of it. And it's that awkward time in the year where it's like um, still hot, but it's cold. So you want to wear beanies and long sleeves and pants, but uh, then you sweat to death when you go into the temperature controlled store. So I was sweating to death with an armful of acrylic yarn that was all super cheap <laughs> and what I was gonna get. So I just kind of looked and was like, okay, well, I know they have it. So when I wanna do that sweater, I'll come back and get it. So that's how I got to making this sweater. And I was just gonna do it for fun because it's not always super fun to film um, crocheting and making videos. It's exhausting. Then, uh, after I finished the front panel, I was like, okay, this is really cool. I want to film this, so I'm going to. So. That's what I got, Emma. What do you think about that? Is that a good little intro? So the Michael's footage you just saw was um, actually my second trip because I needed more yarn than I thought I did just because the other sweater I made, the yarn was bulkier and I used a bigger hook and I used bigger stitches. So, but I went and got the more yarn I needed and they still had it even though it was on clearance and it could have been gone. And I'm horrified of filming, even just like not filming myself in stores because like someone can turn the corner and then they're like, ah, what are you doing? You know? So that was why the footage was so bad. <laughs> 
So here's how the yarn looks when it's um, full. And it was $4 and I got it for two. So I bought six so far and I'm using a five and a half millimeter hook because that's what it says to on the thing. And I usually don't make a swatch first and measure and do all of that. But it's 97% acrylic and 3% uh, viscose and the color is gray. And I don't think the grays were the same lot, but surprisingly the cream colors were all lot 2222. Two, two, two. That's cool because some of them look like it was a whole different color and each one is 252 and on my other sweater it was um, 940 yards total give or take and also as you probably guessed they are medium four weight and I've noticed that if you get like similar yarn but they're a different color because of however they dyed it to get it that color it'll be softer or coarser so like the darker gray one is coarser and this one is softer, but it was the opposite for the other sweater I made. The black was like, and the gray even was so soft, but then the white was like scratchy and I was like. And those colors were not the only yarn I got when I went on the sad day that were on clearance. There was this one as well, which has the same makeup as the other ones. It was a dollar, used to be five. And then this is like the same things. And then I've seen these on like YouTube of like the recycled yarn and it was on clearance. So I was like, oh, that's cool. And I like these colors I could make like a beanie. So I got it because it was $2 and they're usually 10. So I was like, damn, that's a good deal. And it's recycled polyester. And this is the last thing that was on clearance and I almost didn't get it, but I was like, damn, I'll just get it. And I'll probably make a hat or a beanie out of it. Because it's two bucks, so why not? And then when I found all the yarn at the end, um, this is like my favorite color, like the shade of pink. I was like, this makes me so happy, and I, you know, I was sad, so I got it. And it was like four bucks. And then I signed up for Michael's Rewards while I was there, so then I got 20% off. And I got two hooks as well while I was there. This one, because it's pink. And I got this six and a half millimeter hook as well. So the lucky thing and the unlucky thing about sweaters is you have to duplicate each piece. So I've already done all of one panel. So I'm just going to show you what I've done and like what my thoughts were about all of it. And then show you me making them because I have to make them all again. So I'm going to do that color and then that color also goes down the arms. So I started with the bottom with the dark gray and I knew I wanted it to be 20 inches across because that's what I did for my other sweater. So I just chained until I had 20 inches. For the other sweater I made, following the tutorial, it was a single crochet ribbing um, back loop only. And I learned the front post, back post, double crochet thing when I was making the swimsuit. And so I was like, oh, well, let me try that. It might be fun. Because I was just thinking, like, I saw this picture of a sweater that was different colors. And I was like, oh, I like that a lot. I want to make that. And so when I just got all this yarn, I was like, kind of starting from scratch. Like, how could I make that um, sweater myself? I am so out of breath. Oh my gosh. I was just kind of making it all up along as I went. So I did that and I did four rows of it. Then I just kind of measured my torso to see how long I wanted it to be and how long I wanted the top to be to see when I should stop. And I just did regular um, half double crochet for all of it. And so my torso is about 21, 22 where I wanted to stop because the other sweater I made was kind of cropped and I didn't want another cropped one. So I decided to make this about 10 and then finish off with this one because on the other one I made the sleeves very big but when I got to the armpit holes which in the tutorial I was watching was supposed to be like a tank top so instead of what I've done here it went 
in and you like stopped and then went up and made like a tank top shape instead and I didn't make those big enough so when I attached the sleeves um it was like way up in my armpit and I don't like anything touching my armpit so that's the only thing about it and I had to wash it recently and I haven't worn it since I washed it so hopefully that like blocked it and made the armpits more bearable on that sweater so on this one I definitely wanted to change that about it so I ended up making this 10 inches long and then I kind of eyed like where I'd want the armpit to sit and it was about nine inches from where I'll attach the top of the other panel for the back and in the the sweater I saw online that I'm uh, modeling this after they had the sleeve from the panel kind of go like down their arm kind of like fall off the shoulder a little bit before I could see the seam where the sleeve was attached and I was like ooh, maybe that'll be better for the armpit problem so I'm gonna try that too so the bottom is 20 inches across when it's stretched out um, this is 26 so I added an extra three inches on each side which is about eight stitches in so they're both eight stitches in attached and instead of doing like a, a slip stitch or single crochet or whatever to attach them I just weaved it so we'll see how that goes too but yeah that's the front panel and will also be the back panel which you'll see me do and this is the sleeve so it's the same color as the top of the other one and I did the front and back bracket as well just four rows of it double crochet and then for how um, I decided like how wide it was supposed to be, since this is nine inches, I was like, oh, well, how about I just double that? So like, I'll make it where these stitches line up halfway with the front and back panel. So you can see that's like half so that the armhole is just like, for my armpit is just super big and it can't be small and tight and touching my armpit at all ever. So. That's how I decided that. So I just had to increase as I was going out until I reached about 50 stitches. And then I just stopped increasing and just went. And then my arm is about 20 inches long. I put um, stitch markers in it to kind of like put it on me to see if that was like the right length down my arm with the three inches coming off and everything. And it looked good, so I don't know. So hopefully it looks good, but I won't know until I attach everything. So I have started on the second dark gray panel part and I just did 57 stitches cause that was 20 inches and put the double crochet in there to get started on the front and back post part of the cuff ribbing bottom part. So I guess technically it's five rows of stuff for the cuff but it's the chain and then the first row of double crochet and then four rows of doing the front and back post. And then after that, it's just regular half double crochet, no increases or decreases, just making a rectangle. And I'll do that until it's 10 inches tall and that's about 23 rows. So I'm finishing up the gray part and now I'm getting started with the top cream part and I'm just uh, making a chain of 71 and then going into it with half double crochet for about 10 inches which is about 24 rows.
Okay, so I'm just going to finish this off real quick. And I have a darning needle to weave in to attach them. So I'm going to do it on the back. Hello. Yeah. Yeah. You want to see this? All right. Is that cozy? So cozy. Alright, so I just need to count an 8 from the end to start it. And then go all the way. I'm just going to kind of measure like that. Cut it. And put it in there. So I need to find the first stitch on each of these and I'm just going to go through both loops on both to attach them. I'm going to go through this one and then I need to find the first one and then count 8 in. 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8. I'm going to go into that 8th like that. instead of sewing where you go back through the way you came for this you just keep going the same direction as you go and I just made a double knot here for the end So now I'm getting started on the second sleeve and I'm chaining 25 for the cuff and then I'm going to do a double crochet into that chain and then four rows of front and back post. But I accidentally only did three, so. And then after that I'm just going to increase until I get to 50 stitches and then stop increasing and go up for 45 rows in total of half double crochet.
So I finished the last sleeve and this is how much string I have left on that skein. Now I'm going to attach the panels at the shoulders and I did 23 uh, stitches on each side. And now I'm connecting the side panels together. I see if I'm in the frame. Oh yeah. <laughs> uh, your face is not, but the, the shirt is really well in there. Does it? It does. <laughs> oh, I focus so good on you. Pretty face. Oh, thanks. Yeah. And now I am putting the sleeve onto the panels. And the final attachment is closing the length of the sleeve. So now that's finished, I need to get started on the collar, which I usually forget about having to do. <laughs> and for the collar, I'm just going to do a front post, back post, um, double crochet just like I did for all the other cuffs and I was only going to do like a short one like three or four rows again but I tried it on and was like oh maybe I can do a turtleneck and so I ended up doing six rows of the front and back post. I finished so um, I'm really glad I got the fourth skein of cream because I always forget that the collar actually needs a lot of yarn and I forget about doing it. So I finished three of them completely and then I was like, oh, I guess I'm not gonna touch this cream one. And then I was like, oh yeah, the collar. And I ended up using like quite a bit of that for this like turtleneck. So yeah, I ended up using about four and a half skeins. So it's about 1130 yards total. And I had a few critiques about it um, at first when I was attaching everything and trying it on. Um, but now that it's all done, they all kind of worked out. So I love it. I think it's pretty great. I think it's definitely an upgrade from my first sweater I made. The armpits are way lower, which is great. So yeah, I love it. And this type of yarn is actually called tweed, which it's on the labels. I don't know why I missed that, but yeah, it's called tweed. It's where they add like specks of like different colors and different yarn throughout the regular yarn. And I guess there's just something about these colors that I like because my scarf is also like a cream and gray color. Let me get that. So this is the first project that I made. This uh, scarf. It was going to be a blanket, but I didn't know what I was doing, so it became a scarf. So I don't think it would look good with this sweater, but this is like one of my favorite things I've made. So yeah, I also like to keep the labels from the yarn so I know what I used and all of that for all my projects. So, and then I write on the inside of it, like what projects I made with this, um, when, so the date, and then where I bought it and how much I bought it for. Oh yeah, got all these. So yeah, I really love it and I think it turned out really well. So that's all I got.